It is a good day to begin the random acts of kindness because today is World Kindness Day. We're going to be talking about it with the help of our guests. Yes, uh, of course, uh, remember that uh, today is uh, set aside to celebrate kindness in every way possible. And so we've invited somebody who has dedicated a large part of his life uh, to, um, well, Kindness. I think that there's, there's no other way All to way describe to, that. Yes. Um, and uh, we'll say good morning and thank you for joining us to Pastor Follow Shaw, um, all the way from Edo State this morning. Uh, good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. Always a okay. pleasure. I, I, I want to start by asking um, in our world today, we, we would eventually get into talking about the things that you've done in the last few years. Um, uh, what you've dedicated your life to. But I want to talk, uh, ask a question. Um, there is so much religion and so little kindness. Why? I think it's because um, the people who are being religious, so to speak, don't practice the tenets of their religion. That's just the truth. Because... I am of the Christian faith, and if you look at the Bible, the Bible speaks a lot about kindness, uh, and the Bible tells us to be kind. Jesus Christ was so kind. He was kind to the poor. He was kind to the widow. He was kind to the needy. He spoke a lot about it. So even uh, in the book of James, he spoke about true religion is to care for the fatherless, the 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 widows and what have you so if if we are really practicing what we believe we should be kind yes okay talk to us about you know the day itself why is it imperative that we remind ourselves of the importance of acts of kindness to one another it's very important because there's a lot of uh, needy people around the world, especially in our country right now, Nigeria. There's a lot of persons who are in need. A lot of persons are suffering. A lot of persons are in pain. A lot of persons need our kindness. People are dying of hunger. People are dying of so many things, diseases, you know, poverty, uh, name it. So such persons need our comfort. They need our help. They need our smile. Kindness comes in various ways. There are some persons that just need your smile to just wake up from, from committing suicide. There are persons who need just that little cup of rice from you to make their day. So this, there's a lot of, right now, things are getting worse for humans, especially during this COVID-19. All around the world, things are happening. Economy uh, crashing. You know, people are not able to feed and some can't even have uh, access to uh, health facilities. So this is the time, the moment that everyone should step out and show kindness. So that a day is dedicated to it to remind us, for me, is, is worth it. Yes. Yeah, Pastor, um, following show, I, I want you to speak on how we can deal with our own personal issues and still um, express the kindness that the world uh, needs today. And there's a lot of people who have issues. They, they are dealing with so much in life. And because of that, you know, it, it basically shows in the way that they treat others. Um, but how can we deal with those issues that we have and still be kind? First of all, um, uh, to answer your question, some persons think they have their problems and so they have to solve their problems first before they think of helping others. But I, I find out that um, helping others help you solve your own problem. For example, myself, I have my own needs. I have a lot of needs. But I realize that when I make others happy, I get, you know, relieved. I get my problem solved. Like the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. When you when you love others, that love poured back to you. When you show kindness to others, your own problems get solved. You may not be able to solve all your problems before you think of uh, solving other people's problems. But when you start to help them solve their problem and see how they get out of it, that's how God will also send help to you, you know, because we always need each other. There are persons that can also help you solve your problem. You may never know are close to you, but when you step out to help others, you see others stepping in also to help you. And two, 
the challenges you face, they are things that challenges of life and some of it may be just for you to know that uh, there are persons there who are going through similar things like you in order for you to identify with them. That may be the reason God allow you to, to go through what you are going through because there are some persons, because they don't have problems like other persons, they think, oh, everything is rosy for, for everyone. So for me, handling your own challenges personally is to stretch out your hand and help others handle theirs. And when you give out, it comes back to you. It comes back to you in abundance. Yes. That, that, that's actually reminding me of a song. I don't, don't know which song. When you give, you it, com yeah. it comes back to you. All right. I wanted to ask you, um, we all certainly, yeah. the word kindness is something anyone can relate to, but the interpretation, you know, sometimes is different. Some do it yes. for different reasons. Whatever the reason, can you give us suggestions of, some kind of activities we can engage in in our daily lives. Not necessarily, I mean, it doesn't have to be big. You talked about a smile that can brighten somebody's day. So give us some idea of activities that people can engage in to show kindness on this day. <laughs> There's a lot we can do. There's a lot we can do. I, I want to show you an example. Um, I remember... Uh, when one day long ago, when I was still with my parents, I went to the farm and why I was coming, I just, the, 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 the Monday, the Sunday before that Monday, I taught in a, a children's Sunday school class. I was teaching children about being kind to old people, you know, be kind to people that are in need. And then we were coming from the farm and I saw an old widow, she was so old, and suffering, and she was carrying firewood on her head. And this woman, a journey of 30 minutes would take her like three hours because she was sickly and barely can walk. And in that community, they regard such persons because of her old days, they would say, ah, this woman is a witch. So I was going with my friends, we're all young people. You know, you know how young people like to do things. And we past this woman, right down in my heart, I felt like you just thought about kindness yesterday. Look at this woman. How will you just pass an old woman like this and not help her? Another thought came, oh, my friends will laugh at me. I said, no, 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 let me do this thing. I, I went to the woman, I said, hello, mama, let me help you carry this firewood. And she said, no, you are too clean to touch it. You know, I'm an old woman, I don't want to put stain. I said, no, mommy, let me help you. I took it from her. I trekked that distance. It was lighter for her now to walk with. I took it down straight to her house. And then all my friends were laughing at me and say, ah, guy like you, ah, handsome boy like you, look at what you are doing, you are disgracing her. But I didn't listen to them. I took it to her house. And when I got to her home, I discovered that everything in her house was just upside down, unkept, dirty, clothes not washed, plates, pots not washed. And then again, it dawned on me, Will you just drop this thing and go home? You certainly I, have before a... Before she got home, I already packed her clothes. I already started washing her plates and everything. I you you certainly do have a oh, history, my. Pastor. That, you certainly have yeah. a history of um, uh, helping uh, people. And uh, that's part of the reasons we invited you to talk to us this morning. Uh, tell us a bit about what yeah. you do um, at the IDP camp and what acts of kindness have kept you going and what more acts of kindness would you like to see? First of all, I have realized that everyone is created like me, like this visual as you are just showing. These are persons created like me. They have potentials like me. They have potentials like you. All they need is opportunity. They need that opportunity that every one of you there that have made it in life, the opportunities you have, the, 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 the uh, where we do you have to succeed in life. They are brilliant persons like you. So I have decided, look, I'm going to be there for that person who needs help. I want to show kindness to that person. I derive my satisfaction from doing that. And that's how we started. And, and today you see them, these are, these are we're homeless people, persons that were displaced, persons whose parents were killed, persons whose mothers were raped, uh, sisters adopted, 
And, you know, a lot of things happened to them and they were running for their dear life. They just needed a safe environment. They needed a place where they can breathe, a place where, you know, someone can just show love to them. And we just opened our facilities, which we started in 1992. We've been doing this since 1992, helping those from the south, from the middle bed, orphans and widows. So that's how they came here and so, they are living here today. Tell us yeah. about the kindness that have been shown to you that has enabled you. I'm asking you to tell us about the kindness that has been shown to you that has enabled you to keep the place open for this long. And what more acts of kindness do you expect to help keep the place going even another 20 years or less to get them first, out? First, I, I want to thank everyone. Yeah, I want to. Okay, I want to thank everyone who have contributed. In fact, we have lived by the generous goodwill of Nigerians and people all over. Uh, persons who have come here to donate, some have come here to donate little, some have come here to donate much. Journalists have donated, uh, students have donated. We've seen even children doing their birthday, young children, and they bring the proceeds here. We've seen um, um, children groups, uh, students, secondary schools, primary schools, putting pens and pencils together. We've seen a lot of people all over that have helped us, that have sustained us to this point. And we want you to continue. This is what you can do by giving food, by giving education and materials, by giving medicine, by helping. You can see the houses they live is not as good as your homes by building better places for them, providing uh, tissue papers, providing toilets, providing bedrooms, you know, funding their education. Right now, we have more than 50 children from among these ones. These are persons that didn't have good education. They couldn't speak English when they came here. Now, we have more than 50 among them in different universities. From the education they got here, they passed their, their, their secondary school exam, they made their jam, they made their post-UME. Right now, they are in various universities. They are studying medicine and surgery, studying law, studying engineering courses, and so many other courses. But the challenge we have now is two major challenges, feeding the ones that are here and funding the education of the ones that are in the university. And even now, we have more than 100 who are just currently doing their post-UME to go to universities. So we need you, we need everyone out there to please support us. Take this pro, um, project as your project. It's not just my project. I'm just a part of it. All Join right. hands with us to contribute, to fund, to give scholarship to these students. Let me tell you something. You can see during the protest in Nigeria recently, and you see how some people were protesting, and then how hoodlums, archies, and other persons came and turn it. Now, if we take these people out of the street, we will not have such kind of violence, which means if everyone is having something to do, if everyone is educated, imagine now, these ones that are here that are in school, they will not think about burning houses. They are not thinking about going to kill their neighbor. They will not think about terrorism. They will not think about robbery. All they are thinking now is how to graduate, how to contribute to the society, how to develop the society. And tomorrow they are coming back to be the doctors that will treat you, the doctors, the nurses, the engineers that will build our roads, build our houses. So if we stretch and if we cooperate with us, we are able to help the needy, the society will be a better place for you and I to live in. All right, um, Pastor Solomon, following the show. I, I want to you know, um, ask a final question before we let you go. Uh, first of all, thanks so much for all the work that you do, um, and of course, God bless you. Um, um, I, I, I want you to speak quickly on um, how religious bodies can preach a better message of kindness, besides the message of salvation and prosperity and all of that. How can we infuse more of our um, um, a message of kindness um, through our churches and our mosques and, and all religious bodies across the country? Two things we can do. First is to talk about it, to preach it, because it's there in our books. Secondly, to show example. You see, we have to be exemplary. Yes. For example, uh, I don't want to mention names. Uh, I don't know if it's good to do that. Some, some leaders, 
they've come here, some have donated uh, things here, they've, they've told their members, and we see after the, their leaders come here, they go back, tell their members, and their members come here to do the same. We even have Muslims, we have mosques that have done the same here. So if we preach it, teach it, and then take a step further to show example by doing these things, I think it would be a good way to motivate our members to, to do the same because it will be better for, you, for, for the leaders, for, for the members to have a better society. Uh, when you are the only one who is enjoying and everyone around you are suffering, you are not safe yourself. One day they might turn against you. Yes. All right, uh, I think that's all the time we have. All right, Pastor, thank you very much. Uh, like uh, Osalgia said, thank you for the work that you do. And um, hopefully all the kindness you need will find you. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very grateful. Do take Always. care. And I'm, I'm you know. just going to, you know, ask everyone who's, um, you know, on screen this morning or following, you know, if you have... Um, any ways that you can get through to, you know, him um, over there in Edo State or any IDP camp around you. Um, let today be something that inspires you to doing a little bit more uh, for those kids and those children over there uh, who have, you know, nowhere else to turn to. Um, and nothing, honestly, nothing is too small. Too small. Uh, but uh, aside from the heaviness of that, there are other ways you can uh, show kindness. A compliment. Uh, when I came in this morning, um, Amaka, one of my colleagues, said, oh, I like your dress, you know, puts a smile on your face. That's an act of kindness. Um, you see somebody that's wearing a frown, ask, how are you doing? And whether you mean it or not, just ask, please. It's an act of kindness. Give someone a hug you know. also, you know, buy breakfast for someone uh, this morning. <laughs> the way you will buy one for me <laughs> after. Uh, there's, there's, there's so many ways, you know. That, you yeah, know I, not, I actually not everyone... used to have a segment on my morning show when I was on radio that we call Random Acts of, of Kindness. Kindness. So every morning um, we put out two chores and say, you do this as your random act of kindness or choose one that you want to do. And then the next day we get feedback on what you were able to do just to reinstate in our hearts yes. that as much as yes, we hustle, it is bitter, it is hard to survive. You know, there are still people who you are better than that you can help. Um, th there's uh, something, you know, I think uh, Pastor Florence also, also mentioned it, and, and it's about empathy. Yes. Um, there is um, a message that I've, a long time ago, I was, um, I listened to, um, some time ago, I listened to Pastor T.G. Jakes, and he made a mention of, um, well, his message then was about empathy, and he was saying uh, that people have, every person has a pain in their thigh, um, and that means everybody has a pain that they can't show you, you know, you can only get to see it if you see them naked, or, I mean, if you, to pay like, attention. Open, you know, them up completely, um, and so, Live your life knowing that the next person, regardless of how their mood is, happy, excited, moody, there's something that they are bothered with. And so let that always be in your mind and, you know, be a reminder when you treat people the way that you treat people. Yes, know that the next person in your office, your colleague, the cleaner at work, the man at the gate, the messenger at the office, everybody has their own personal issues. Yes, so indeed. be kind, you know, to one another. Express, you know, some level of kindness to every person. Leave tip for your waiters. Some people don't like to do that. Leave tips for your waiters. <laughs> for those that, some um, restaurant don't allow you to do that anymore. There are so many ways we can practice kindness. So we're just reminding you of the importance Leave this change. Morning. When you buy um, corn and pear, leave the 15 hour change and go. She <laughs> needs it. <laughs> <laughs> the woman who helps you grind tomatoes at, at the market, give her 200 naira today. It's okay, all right? That extra 100 naira is not going to ruin your life. Give her 200 naira. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.